now we're live. That was harder than it needed to be. Goodness me. Okay, I've got light. I've got Wi-Fi. I've got a chair. Let's connect. Oops. Is this? Oops. Oh, Megan. Hello and welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. Hi, how are we going on? Let me get it up online here so we can all see what's going on. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Let's straighten up my camera. Right, make it worse. That'll do. Hello, Karen. Hello, Jackie. How are we all going this afternoon? Where you are in the world. And for those of you just tuning in for the first time, welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Natalie May. And this afternoon, as part of the Great International Craft Show online, I am doing a, I'm going to do a scrapbook page for you this afternoon and I don't really have much of an idea at this point what we're going to do, so I'm going to wing it. Put my glasses on so I don't need those. Um, so as part of the Greater the International Craft Show, of course, we've got a few fantastic specials happening and the specials are... Excellent, excellent specials. We do a new special every day just for you guys, just to tempt you into something a little different every day. And today we have got 15% off of Tim Holtz products, 15% off of Vicky Booten products, 15% off of patterned papers. And how did that camera move again? And... We have got a huge amount of amazing specials. Oh, I've made it worse. How am I, what's going on? Oh, no, there it is. Don't touch it. Um, yeah, so we've got a great amount of specials as well. Uh, perfect for you guys to, to take advantage of so we've got everything from heat tools on special to some fussy cutting scissors on special we have got passion paper on special today we have got paint pens on special there's heaps heaps and heaps and heaps something to suit all range of paper crafters which is awesome awesome for you uh, you will find all of our specials on nataliemay.com.au and you, it's like the, the price is right, look at that. And you can join our Facebook group, Natalie May Scrapbooking Creative Community. Follow me on YouTube and Instagram to see lovely photos of my bulldogs. Right, just before I start, um, something else that I want to show or we'll talk to you about today is I have got some online classes. I've got a new one that we've put into the mix and that is coming up in a couple of weeks time on a Tuesday evening, Tuesday, July 26th. And it is an online tag class. This is a, I, I loved doing this project and this is our finished project here. It is a, a tag that is size wise about I don't know, as big as my hand, hang on, 20 centimetres high, <laughs> um, and we use Dusty Attic Chipboard, and we're going to be using Lindy's Gang products, so your kit for this class includes all of the chipboard um, and some other little bits and pieces, but you will need to supply your own mediums and your own colours, but I just thought I'd give you a quick little glance at how amazing this project is, and it's a whole heap of fun. So that is available online to purchase under classes by Natalie May. $26 class and you can join in any time you like. We have almost sold out of the classes. Uh, there's still 
a few left, but um, perfect for for you to have a bit of a play with something different. Um, and then there's going to be another one in September, I believe. All right. So what today's plan is, is I thought that I would do a double scrapbooking layout using one of the new collections from Paper Rose. So Paper Rose are a local Adelaide company who have been in business for quite a few years. And Paper Rose, as most of you may or may not know, I did work for Paper Rose for quite a while. And I do really love their, their um, approach to their business and their, the fact that they, they print locally and has some great designers. So I thought that I would take this latest collection, which is called Blueprints, and do a double page. So let's have a look at what, we, what we've what we got with our papers here. Um, a masculine double page, masculine pages can be a little harder to do. Um, so I thought we'd just do something super simple today and, and see what we can come up with. I don't have much of a plan, but we're just going to wing it. All right. Coffee break. Sorry, girls. Okay, so we've got this paper here. This is called Blueprints F. Oh, they're just alphabeticalized, so I'm not going to go through what they're all called. Um, this one here, I have cut out already. These elements here and some of those pipes ready to go. Um, it's a double-sided paper. So it's got this checker plate on the other side here. And that one, um... <laughs> where'd that land? Just threw that at Louise, sorry. Uh, so there we've got this one here. I really like this one. This, is, this one is called Blueprints E, and it's a black and white. Uh, this has got a double side, and I really like that side too. So when I'm planning a kit, first thing I do is have a look at both sides, making sure that both sides of the paper, um, you know, is it something that I can use. I really love this. This grey is fantastic. We've got this one here, which has got this great blueprint on it and a really nice neutral grungy background here. This one is uh, a nice kind of light grey with a dark checker plate. And then we have a dark charcoal with a white print. Hello, Susan. Um, and this has got a chevron. Now, what I do like about all of these papers is the barcode strip on here is really usable on all of them. One of my favourite prints to work with, which is this, this lovely grid. So we've got it in grey. We've got it in charcoal. We have got some brown lines. This one is just a black crisscross. We've got some brown lines on that one. And then that's got like a, a rusty red colour to it as well. So make sure that you don't uh, throw those out. Radio. Let's have a look here. Now, I haven't really thought about what colour cardstock to use as my base. I'm going to do a double scrapbook page. So a double scrapbook page means I need to be able to carry it across both the pages. Uh, with my papers here, I want to turn them up the way that I will probably utilize them. I really like this one and I like that pop of color that it gives. Um, let me get that out of the way because it's changing my color perspective here. That's great and that's great. So I'll probably use maybe both sides of that one. And I do like that print. So how do I choose what color base it's gonna go on? Um, white looks pretty good. It's going to work on a white base. I think that's going to look great. It's going to make all those colours pop. I could do something a little different and put it on craft. Craft doesn't look too bad either. And it's going to make it a little bit earthier. Ooh, good option there. Or do I want to put it on black? Now I don't know. I'm going to put it on black. So I'm going to take these other ones and get them out of the equation, pop them on the floor next to me. Good afternoon, Linda. 
Now, this is going to be a kit that is available for you to purchase. What that means is, um, I think Louise will be popping it up online shortly, if it's not already online. And it will be in the new for July and uh, under show specials and kits by Natalie May. Have we not got any black cards, dog, before I cut this? Yeah. Didn't they order some? Didn't some come in in those big boxes? Why don't you have a look for me? Thank you. I'm going to cut that off anyway and we're going to commit to it. Right. Cut off the barcode strip to take it back to a 12 by 12. And I'm using my large crafter's companion guillotine. That's my paper cutter of choice. I do love this trimmer. Now, when I'm creating a double scrapbook page, the very first thing I do is take my pages, flip them over and get some tape and, and tape them together. And grabbing some washi tape is something that I didn't do before. So what I, what I like about doing a double page is that it's a story across the whole page. So I always work in a in a 12 by 24 piece if you oh, I had to pick up the tape that I can't find the end in didn't I oh for goodness sakes right so when you purchase the kit for this class online you will receive a photograph of the finished project and then then um, you'll need to watch this video back so you can see how it all goes. So we have joined those two pieces together and they don't line up. Oh, Natalie. Did you find them, Lou? Or do I need to stop what I'm doing? Oh, too bad, make it work. There we go. So, double scrapbook page runs on a 12 by 12. Okay, let's go with this one across the top. Dark one. Okay, now I've got a bit of a plan. Now it's kind of coming together. So, we're we going to take Blueprints D, which is this one here. And I'm going to cut off the barcode and then I am going to turn it around into my paper trimmer that way and I'm going to cut it back to be 11 and a half cutting off a little bit sliding that bit off to the side and then I'm going to cut a piece. I'm going to cut this straight in half at six inches. No? all the boxes oh she hates me no she doesn't do i want to pop it so there's two things i can do here i've got a piece here that i can join in the middle now yeah. oh Ooh. okay i'm gonna join it in the middle like that that's what i'm gonna do right i've got a piece that goes tells a story all the way across all the way across the page Secondly, I want to put a heavier piece at the bottom. So my heavier piece at the bottom. No, no. I really like this one. So 
So this time we're going to take the barcode off of Blueprints B. Take off, take this back to be exactly the same size. So we've got 11 and a half. So this time I'm going to go to, I'm actually going to cut it to be five inches. And this one is going to be five inches. Right, so we've got a piece here that we're cutting off. And then I'm going to stick this down as my base. Now, double-sided tape, I am, I'm just using a scrapbook adhesives tape runner for this. And this is an important thing to do. Please do not stick everything down edge to edge. What I'm doing is just joining it in the middle. So this is, of course, where the center of my paper is. And I'm gonna go like this, so that I've got a bit of a border. that finger on one side and then I'm going to do that so I can always go and add more tape on okay but what, I, what I'd like to do is just for positioning just get them down like so okay now with this one I'm leaving a bit of a gap in the middle okay Meeting this one up. But it just enables me to be able to move things around, change my mind if I need to. And now I have got a page that goes, everything's stuck down um, enough. But if I need to, I can move it. If I change my mind and I wanna slide something in underneath it, I can. But I have that ability to be able to move it around. What am I going to do next? Let's have a look at our papers here. Um, what I don't have and what I should have by now is some photo mats. So I'm just going to grab me some photo mats. Won't be a moment. Scrapbooking is really nothing without photographs. So photogra having some photos handy or at the very minimum, some photo mats is gonna help you. So I have got here some scraps of paper which are cut to six by four or a little bit smaller than six by four. So this one is, uh, what was that measurement? It was three and three quarters, just under four. And I do make this one about the same. I'll make this a little bit shorter. Just so that I've got a little bit more room to move. So quite often when I have a, a photo, uh, so if I'm, I've got some photos and I think, oh, I want to use that, what I will tend to do is trim them a little bit, take a little bit off the sides, take a little bit off here and there. That one's perfect. Um, and I know that with these photo mats, if I stick my photos over the top, then it will be fine. How much was this kit, Lou? Do you remember? $22. $22 to do this scrapbooking layout with everything that you need in the kit. Alrighty, 
So I've got photo mats here ready to go. And what I want, blah, blah, what I would like to do is I'm just going to stick some card underneath them. So uh, like just like I would be doing if I was um, photo, if I was going to get some foam tape, but I'm just going to use one, and this layout's going to hold four photos. But if I don't have a bit of a guide on when these, where these photos are going to go, then, um, you know, kind of creating the, the page is kind of pointless, isn't it? One. So I just do this instead of using foam tape. That's the only reason you see me use pieces of cardboard. Uh, and cardboard is perfectly fine to use. And we are saving the environment just a little by adding this to paper, you know. <laughs> So how's everybody's day where they are in the world? Who's watching from where? Did everyone catch my my last live face like a couple of live Facebooks today? I see that a couple of you are back again. So I'm just peeling that off peeling that off and I'm only exposing half of it so that's going to go there photo there cold and wet in Lake Macquarie what state's Lake Macquarie in? New South Wales, New South Wales. did you map that? no, no. Um, well it is cold here in Adelaide it's not wet Ah, oh, Lynn is here from Victoria. <laughs> New South Wales. Ah, and I think Naomi is at home unwell, which is a bit sucky. So I hope you're going to be feeling better soon. These two are the same size. Yeah, it's a bit icy cold here at the moment. I do say we are a lot luckier than some, so I am not complaining. My Ugg boots are in the car. Mind you, this time yesterday I had my Ugg boots on. Maybe I've been too busy today. Right, photo mats. So the size of my photos uh, are just a little under six by four. So I will trim my photos and what I want to do is I want to try and plan out where my photos are going to go. Oh, Sandra's also from cold and wet Lake Macquarie. Oh, you girls should get together. It's like a dating app, isn't it? <laughs> but not a dating app. For crafting. For crafting. It's like a crafting app. Okay, coffee, sorry. So I'm going to put one photo here and I'm going to put one photo here. I'm going to put one photo here and then one will go here. So what I want to do now is I want to take my, I want to cut the rest of my papers to base around this, to work around this. Okay. So I think that this gives me a really good guide. I do love this page. And I do like that one. But I've got a lot of grey, grey, grey and grey going on. So I'm just going to keep this one here in mind. And I'm going to use both sides of this one, I think. So to start with, let's go with Blueprints A. And we're going to cut that. Putting it in sideways into our trimmer. And let's go with... Oh... Let's, let's go with about there. About nine inches, okay? So putting it in sideways, cutting it at nine 
inches, popping the off cut bit aside because we might use that yet. And then that's gonna go across there. And what I would like to do is take 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 some of this one so this guy is blueprints e and this is those busy pipes i haven't decided if i want to use the busy pipes yet so cutting off the barcode i think i want to go that last one was nine so let's make this nine and a half Live on the wild side, I know. Sorry. Louise is laughing at me. All right, do I make it nine and a half? Let's have a little bit of a think. I haven't cut it yet. Don't cut it. I could change my mind. This is live. I have room to move. Actually, what I'd like to do is I like that there, but I want to put a piece in here. So maybe we'll just cut it to six inches first and then we'll cut it to nine, okay? Can you see how my brain works? Oh, shocking. I think they can hear it. They can hear my brain working, you reckon? <laughs> Thanks, Lou. So putting one piece aside, leaving me with this bit here. And I want it to sit about there, because I don't want to cover this up too much. So I'm going to take this to there. So this piece here, which is the reverse of the pipes, is currently six inches by 10. So that is just going to overlap there. Now, yes, I've covered up some of this cool print underneath, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. That works for me. That goes there. That's going to go there. That's there and that's there. Right. How about we just commit to it, stick it down, stop fluffing around, have it got all day. You guys have got things to do, people to see, families to hang out with so a bit of tape on the back of this one I'm just gonna go one two and I'm not going right edge to edge because I've still got this bit exposed here and I'm overlapping my page is that straight close enough but I am gonna put a bit of tape there and a bit of tape there was straight now it's straight See, that's too busy. That's better. It's milder. Tape, tape. A very minimal overlap there to there. And then I will put something here. And that something there is going to be not that. Maybe no. Maybe mm, no. No, 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 yes. Okay, so the paper with the book print on it. Cut off your barcode. So I love creating a page like this where it's quite simple when all the colors match up together. Conveniently on this paper, it's got lines. We've got one, two, so we've got three columns. Let's just cut off that last column. And we want to trim it to the word bean. Bean, bean incorporated. So that will take it to nine, Nine and a half. That's 
got Bevis written there. Thank you. It had to say thank you to Bevis. Well, isn't that interesting? Look, it does say Bevis there. Where is it? Here. Yeah. Does it say Alison? Thank Bevis. So that he had to thank Bevis. <laughs> <laughs> As years ago, he had to thank Mr. Webb. Right, anyway, moving on. I have a very, very dear friend. Something shiny. I oh, know, something shiny. Off I go again. Very, very dear friend called Bevis, as most of you know. Alison Bevis, who's currently in New Zealand. Oh, is she? Yes, at the paper craft show over there. All right, so I'm going to stick this one on the edge here. And it's about two fat fingers away from the edge. And I'm lining it up like so. Now, the reason is I want to take a little bit and put it on this side here, all right? So I'm going to take another piece. Um, let's go with a piece maybe maybe I'll measure it two inches by that nine and a half again. And it's going to go in this side. And I don't mind that I've got that little bit of overlap. There we go. Now, something that would have looked awesome is inking the edges of all of these papers in, oh, I like that, in a, uh, like a distress oxide such as black soot um, or vintage photo. That would have looked really good because it would have all tied together really nicely. Um, now, I've got these little bits here and here. Now, the reason I didn't make those meet is I wanted to leave something, uh, a line through there for it to connect to our outer edges. So choosing a one of our, our barcode strips will work really well. And that's why we didn't bin those babies. Just have to find them. Um, and I'm thinking at this point that I want to add something with a little bit more colour. So I haven't... Actually, I quite like this one. So this one here is the reverse of Blueprints D. And the really easy thing is, is you just snip it off with scissors, pop some tape on the back and slide that baby in there. Cover up that gap. And then you do exactly the same thing on the other side. Slide that baby in there. So what has happened is we're bringing in some of this depth of color here and I can use this somewhere else. No idea where yet, but that's okay. Right, Louise, you'll be late for Pilates. See you later, alligator. Okay. So this is the base of my page. And when I create a scrapbook layout, creating the base of my page is, is like, it's laying your foundation. Oh, I've just lost that piece. Where did it go? Laying a foundation out. Everything that I add onto here is the fun stuff, right? Which I love. So I know my photos are going to go here and I'll do vertical photos on this side. Um, and I can add more decorative bits, but this is, is essentially the guts. This is my cool bit here. So I can grab some more of these wonderful elements that I've got. So I've got some of these zippy strip things here and add in some decorative pieces. But what I have also got is I've got all of those awesome embellishments and I have some chipboard as well. So let's have a bit of a think first and foremost. The big pieces of paper that I've got left Mmm, I like it. 
I want to use these big pieces that we've got left first of all, all right? So let's take this one here, which is your checker plate sort of style. And I'm going to cut that and pop it where? Where am I gonna put it? Let's just cut it. So cut off my barcode, which I didn't do earlier. And I wanna add some heavier, bolder pieces under here. Let's have a look and see what we can do. Like that. So I'm gonna put that under a photo on this side. So this one is going to be, let's cut it at half at six inches. And it's just gonna give that a bit of depth. Now I'm going to cut it in half again because I want to use it on both papers, on both sides. So I need to be able to get the most out of my paper. Not in half, but close enough. So that is going to sit like that. And it needs to balance. So I'm going to pop some over here. trim is driving me nuts and I'm actually going to pop that underneath my photo hello Leslie so I'm just peeling my tape back a, a freckle not enough just to hold it into position I might do a little stenciling, guys. What do you reckon? Bit under there. Done. So crooked. So crooked. But you can see what I'm trying to do here badly. Alright, that'll go there, that'll go there. Let's do a little stenciling. So I have got uh, my my lines stencil and I just want to add a few little patterns around the place. Uh, and I'm going to use a blending tool. And I've got some black soot distress oxide. And of course, black soot distress oxide, luckily for you guys, uh, don't, we don't have any. has sold out. <laughs> so you can use any. So <laughs> oh, I love, love live Facebook. You can use any sort of black ink. What I'm wanting to do. So this is my organic lines. And as you can see, I'm just. Pushing. We've got vintage photos. But we have vintage photos, so I should have used that one, except, but I've committed to this black one now. It's giving me that. Look, you didn't ask before. Oh, I know I didn't ask first. There's too much going on in my brain to ask questions first. Right. A few little lines there. Okay. Oh, walnut, stain. Is that walnut stain. No, see, that's the wrong colour. And even vintage photos, a vintage photo actually would work. Hey? We've got vintage photo. We've got vintage photo. Excellent. Just adds a little bit of something. You know what? We'll add vintage photo as well. That's what we're going to do. Keep Louise happy. God, anyone would think she's the boss. Here we go. So this one's going to go here. So I'm going to pop a little over here. It's not, it's not much. It's just a little bit. But 
But you see how important it is to have those um, those photo mats for positioning? That's that's super important. because it just goes to the background but it's still part of the story see you tomorrow everybody. see you tomorrow thanks lou have a good night have fun at netball right we can talk about it now she's gone right done 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 i might think i think i need some up here I'm going to put the lid back on that baby and get that one out. So this time I'm going to use vintage photo, same dirty sponge, mostly because I'm lazy, and I'm going to go and offset it just a little bit. Now this is totally optional, this bit. You don't need to, if you don't have a stencil like this um, or anything, you know, you could quite easily come up with, um, you could just leave it, it'll look perfectly fine because let's be honest, I have no idea what's coming next. So I, th I know that I've, got, I've cut out all of those little elements and we're gonna add those on. But, there becomes a point. Oh, and chipboard. I said I was going to do some chipboard, didn't I? I'm not even lining them up now. I'm just stenciling in the same area. <sighs> right. Like that. And, and this one over here. So I like to start underneath where my photo is going to go because then if I don't nail it I'm going to cover it up anyway it's going to be perfectly fine now while I've got a bit of vintage photo I can actually distress up some of my edges a little bit and I can just grunge up this page a bit so here I can just take a little bit of dirty sponge Okay, and you can do that with this sort of grungy sort of layout. It's working. It's working, working, working. And you'll see, like, there's no more addition of any ink. I'm just using this dirty sponge, and that's kind of cool. Now, included in your kit, I, I've grabbed some dusty attic chipboard as well. So while I've got the ink pads out, let's add some colour to that. So a couple of ways that you can do this. This scrap paper would be awesome. Oh, no, here, this will do. Um, do What colour do I want them? I don't actually know. But let's start with brown. Ink on, I'm just gonna do a bit of that. I could get all fancy here and add like something like Lindy's Magicals, which would give it a shimmer, or I could use embossing powder and it, I could heat emboss these. Um, I'm not wanting to go fancy, I'm wanting to go simple today, but I'm also just adding a freckle of black And I'll bring it up to camera to show you. Can you see the sort of colour that we're talking there? Yeah, it doesn't show up really well, but you know. But we've coloured it ready to go just in case I decide to use it. Clean your hands before you touch your page because distress oxides tend to rub off on your fingers a little. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick my photos down and I'm gonna to commit to it, okay? Commit to it. And I'm gonna start with taking that off, 
taking that off. Going to add some more tape under that guy. I've got the afternoon sun coming in now. And I want to stick that up there. And I'm not pushing it down yet because I haven't decided that that's exactly where I want it to go. All right. Tape off there. Tape off there. And that's going to go vertical. Vertical. There's the edge of my page right there. Happy with that. So we have got um, a three more days of live Facebooks. Every morning at nine o'clock, you will find me right back here and I will be doing a live Facebook every morning. I'll do a quick studio tour, bit of a morning chat, talk about the day's specials because we're going to have a new special tomorrow. Uh, and have a bit of a um, bit of a walk around, and then at ten thirty every morning we're going to have a, another live Facebook. What am I going to do tomorrow? I'm going to play with some Lindy's tomorrow, guys. What's tomorrow? Friday? Yeah, tomorrow's Friday, and I have decided I'm going to have a bit of a Lindy's day where I'm going to play with Lindy's. That'll be fun, right? There's the edge of my page where my fat finger is there. So I'm going to stick that there. Right, right, so I'm stuck down. I've committed to that. Beautiful. So that is the base of our page with our photos down, with our bit of inking done, and the rest is decoration. So decoration now is all about just adding the embellishments in. I do like these, so I'm just going to push these guys out so that I can shuffle them around my page. So I'm just gently going to do that. So 10.30 tomorrow morning will be my first creative live. And we're talking Adelaide time, of course, because that's where I am. But oh, get in there. You can go back and see me and chat um, see what else we're up to anytime you like. I, um, you can go back and watch all of these videos, of course. So all of the ones that I have done previously will go up on YouTube, uh, and you will be able to watch. This bit here goes in the bin. This bit here goes on your page and you wipe your fingers down again. Now I could heat set that ink and, and it will stop it budging, but, um, I'm being too lazy to do that. And before I do that, I want to have a bit of a shuffle around with some of these embellishments that I've got. Uh, do I want to add, I think I want to feel like I need a tag here. I feel like I need, I feel like I need a tag. Is anybody watching? Oh, good. Am I just having a chat to myself today? Because that's a thing. Uh, where are we at here? Ooh, I like that. Right, this is where I start winging it, okay? This is where you have to start winging it too. So I'm going to take this piece here, okay? And I'm going to pop some tape on the back. And it just looks like it needs a little bit of heaviness down in this section here. I've left that sitting there because I haven't decided if I like it or not. I think I do like it. I do like that it, it joins the page together, but I'll come back to it. Um, I I like this bit here. I might pop it up there. Let's pop it up the top. Again, pair of scissors, just winging it, people. We've laid down our foundation. The rest is just icing. Then it looks like you've got a much bigger piece in there than you actually have, yeah? And it's all starting to kind of come together a bit. What are we going to do with these guys? 
Well, they're going to become part of our page. Whoops, I broke it. That's going to go there. I think I like it down here. Or maybe, maybe we're going to cut it up. Okay, this big one here, we're going to cut it up there. Cut, cut, cut. So then this guy is going to go down here. And this broken bit, oops, let's just take it off, be gone. We're going to put here. Happy days. Uh, okay, good, good. Coming together. I think that I'm pretty happy. <laughs> pretty happy with how we are going here. Now, with the embellishments, so I cut out some embellishments. So these were on that 12 by 12 sheet, so you're going to need to get your fussy cutting scissors out. Um, I did try and cheat first of all and see if any of these clocks I could cut out with a punch and there was about two of them. So it doesn't necessarily work. Uh, now I also got quite lazy. Quite a few of these have tops on them. I didn't have time for that. So I just cut them off. Uh, and then I, I did cut these guys out though. So let's lay them all out. And now I'm going to pop them onto my page. Now just off screen, I've just got them sitting on a little table next to me because I've run out of room. But I like these bits. So I'm before I stick down these guys, I'm going to start layering them around. And these become our embellishments. These are our embellishments. So I didn't need that black strip that I had before. I just want to now have a little play around my page. And do I want to, how am I going to link them? Am I planning on linking them? Let's think about it. Uh, do I want to link some of these? Will they link up together? Do I, oh, I could take it off the page. I like it going that way. Then that one has to go like that, perhaps. I love this one. So I might pop him connecting to my chipboard. So they don't have to connect, but they do look very cool. Dun, 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 dun. Where are you going there, mate? There we go. But I feel like they need to be connected to something. So if you're going to put them on, are they going to go like that? I feel like it has to go this way. There we go. There we go. Or at least touching that edge. That's okay. Oh, there we go. We're connected to something there. We've got a bit of an S-bend going on. What's happening? What's happening here? We have got... Do I like this? What's happening over this side? You know what? I really like that. So I'm going to commit and I'm going to stick. Just a little glue, okay? Doesn't need to be all the glue in the world. And I'm connecting it to that edge. Doesn't need to come off my page. It's okay. So for those of you just tuning in, there's a few of you, few of you viewing for the first time. This is a scrapbook page that will be available for a kit. Um, it's available as a kit right now, actually. I think Lou's already put it up, which is good. I like this bit. See, that can connect to that, but that doesn't. Okay, hang on. Oh, 
Man, I'm overthinking this. Goodness me. Oh, hello. You know what? Just, should I just stick it? Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna stick it. I'm just gonna do it, guys. Stop fluffing around, Natalie, and get it done. That guy's gonna go up there. And I've got some clocks to go on. So I've got a clock that can join in there. This concerns me. I need to make this work better. How would that work? So that could work like a bit of that. Okay, I've been here for an hour. How are you guys still listening to me? I do not know. I like that going like that. Yes, look at that. Or maybe that would be better. No, that's definitely going to go up there. Commit. <coughs> Haven't stuck down my pieces yet. They're still very movable. Done. I can put a clock there. I can connect that. This guy here. Okay, I'm gonna take this one and I'm, it's, it's bugging me, it needs to be stuck. So I'm getting a little glue on it. And it's going right there. Now, a stapler would be an amazing embellishment to stick right here, okay? A stapler would be awesome to stick right there. Just stick that on. That is gonna go right there. I'm just gonna to commit to that. Um, while I'm fluffing around here, guys, just a friendly reminder, when you get to the, um, when you get to your checkout and you get up a pop, little pop-up window asking you to donate to ovarian cancer, thank you very much for doing that. Um, most of you know that's something very near to my heart and as a survivor of ovarian cancer, um, raising money uh, is something that is very important to me. I, I can't stress enough how I how important it is to me to, to get the message across to you guys um, about awareness for ovarian cancer, okay? So please take a moment if you have an extra couple of dollars or if you want to purchase something from our ovarian cancer fundraiser that we have going on at the moment, then we would be very grateful for that too. I'm going to stick that down there. I'm just going to stick it because I'm taking way too long because people are sick of listening to me. Under my photo. That can go there. Oh, let's slide that down. Has it stuck? Not yet. Uh, so yes, yeah, so thank you very much for doing that. On a regular basis, uh, we tally up all of our donations and send off a payment to a donation to Ovarian Cancer Australia. Um, and our all of your donations have gone into in there in my name. So um, again, thank you very much for that. It's that money is not going to my next gin bottle. It is going to ovarian cancer. So um, for that, I am grateful. Okay, let's have a quick look here about where this is going. This is a great little piece. Have I stuck that? No, I haven't stuck that. I like that. I like that. So I'm going to stick this one down first. Just tucking those ends into there and there. And then that's going to go there. Um, so yes, on that note, ladies, Ovarian cancer is um, something that you can't really go back from. <laughs> uh, 
it has a you need to get it early I'm going to cut this big one up okay um, yes ovarian cancer needs to be get got, um, you need to catch it early for it to be successful have a high success rate other than that it can be a little unforgiving one would say I was lucky enough that I caught it early a good spot rightio so we're nearly there we're nearly there popping that guy in here and all I have to do next is I've got a couple of pipes still still to stick on and I've got to stick my clocks on and I am done done like a dinner rightio stuck 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 and I've got one more pipe here where should I put this one kind of feel like it needs to go down here, down here, down here. That works for me. Hello, Tina. Welcome, my love. How are you? How has your day been? You've just listened to me, missed listening to me waffle on about vaginas. As we do. Because ovarian cancer is all about your body. All right, so there we go. That's there, that's there, that's there. Okay, done. I'm happy with that. So we have got a little connection here. Got a little bit going on. So some of these pipes need clocks tied uh, in and around them. So I've just got, because some of these are really badly, very badly uh, cut, I'm going to take some of them and... Pop a little glue on the back, I've edged them. And I'm going to lay them in and around here. Just lay them around my page in a bit of a cluster. Okay, so a little bit of a dirty ink pad. La what are you doing today, Tina? Marking lambs. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. Now you'll notice I'm not, and I'll do it again very slowly to show you, I'm not, um, I'm not gluing the whole things down. So I'm inking my edges, inky, inky, inky. I'm going to grab some glue and I'm just popping it like that. And then that's the bit that gets stuck because I like to go back and stick a little foam tape underneath sometimes. Oh, that afternoon sun's just coming through the window. Just enough to make me sneeze. Right, I really like this one, so I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm going to pop some down here. And I'm going to pop some up there. Half a clock, gauge. Uh, this one here, this is kind of like a different colour to the rest of them. So I'm just going to put that one aside. Don't want to use it just yet. Same as this guy here. What I want to do is I want to use all my neutral ones first. My neutral ones first because, oh, that's terrible. Bad cutting. Uh, your neutral ones first because they are... They're going to blend into our background more and become more of a feature rather than standing out too much. All right. That one needs a bit of an ink on the edges. Darken up that edge. Racing here. Racing. What are you doing? Raining or racing? Is it racing? What are you saying there, Tina? What have I missed? What didn't I catch? Oh, raining. Um, we have got blue skies here in Adelaide. It's actually quite nice at the moment. Um, how long it's going to last for? Is anybody's guess but right now 
it's not too shabby. All right, I am on the right track here. I'm going good for time. It's been an hour and I've created a double scrapbook page and talked a lot of waffle. Um, <laughs> your brain's not working, Tina. Tina's exhausted and her brain's not working. That, my friend, I can relate to. Um, okay, so there we go. A bit of a clock in under there. So you can see how we're all going here. We're all coming together. And our little clocks become these great little clusters. Cut them up, slide them in. I mean, you could get some fantastic older vintage photos to go on this sort of page. There's so many great things. What's this guy? This was a cut out piece. Where can I pop him? Oh. A bit concerned about the colour of this one. It's not quite where I'm going, but let's let's have a little think about it. Oh, stuff it, Natalie. Stop thinking about it and stick it down. Stick it where? Stick it where? Stick it where? Doesn't connect to anything. Can't put it there. I know I waffle on about this connection thing, but it does make a difference. Okay. It does make it visually appealing. Right, my black clock, I'm gonna put that aside. My black clock. Is more of a feature piece. So I might pop him here and I'm gonna use some foam tape to stick it down. because I want him to sit a little higher. And I need to ink the edges because my edges are badly cut. So that's a really good way, a really good tip to take away the focus from any terrible cutting of circles like I've done. And pop that baby there. Everything else is stuck down, that's good. And I'm just going to hum and ha about whether or not I like this one. I don't because I don't think it's the right colour. So I'm just going to leave it off. I do have some other little clocks cut here. And I need another one over here because things really do need to be done in threes. I just like that one actually. It's super cute. Badly cut. Take the focus away, bit of foam tape. Let's pop it somewhere, shall we? And then we'll add um, some words, build up a bit of a title sort of situation. And we are done, guys. Done as a dinner. If you had some chipboard clogs, clogs, cogs, you could add those. Um, I don't, I didn't have enough to put in the kit, so the ones that I've got, just not quite enough packets left, but you could add some chipboard ones. Um, get in there, foam tape, foam tape. Pop that there, pop that there. I don't want to use that, I've decided. Righty o. Now these are awesome. So on here we have got some really really cool sentences, sentence builders, phrases, things to help you. I'm going to take "Live Your Best Life" and I'm going to be a little brutal and I'm going to scissor cut this guy here. Shame Louise is gone. I could really go a glass of wine. What day is it? Thursday? Nearly Friday. Normally we have a rule. But rules meant to be broken, aren't they? So I think tonight's definitely a wine night. Done. Snippity snip. Now, if you prefer to cut a straight line, Go for it, knock yourself out. I'm not that fussed, but I am trimming. 
that's going to go there. And I'm going to also take Explore. And these two here, Dream and Imagine, and they're going to be my titles for my page. And I am going to ink the edge of these so that they blend in beautifully with our page rather than just get tacked on and look out of place, okay? So scrapbooking is great, but you do need to go and put some photos on your page and some journaling. Journaling is important with scrapbooking. When I used to teach beginner scrapbooking classes um, here in Adelaide, ladies used to tell me continually again and again and again, oh, I don't want to journal on my pages. I don't like my handwriting. Um, I think it's very important to journal on your pages. When you are gone and you are dead and buried and your family throw your scrapbooking albums in a mini skip, you want them to know who's in that photo. There's less chance of them being uh, thrown out if they have got information on them. So, so share your story with those people. Your handwriting is your legacy. Do you not love picking up a birthday card that your grandmother, your great-grandmother or your grandfather wrote? Um, you know, a birthday card with their handwriting in it is just, just divine. I love, love, love that. My lovely Jessica, she's an emotional creature, that one. Um, she, she just gets emotional looking at birthday cards of my, uh, that my, my, her two great grandmothers have written in, who have now both passed, um, but their legacy and those memories associated with, with just those birthday cards alone is, is awesome. So, you know, we've still got those. It's so cool to have that st still to share. All right, where am I going to stick that? No, I feel like it needs to be up here. And I could have connected it to that, but I didn't. So I'm just going to whack it here. I don't want to cover that up. Um, and now I'm going to pop these on. So, yeah, your handwriting is, is so important. I really think that um, there's not enough importance put into our handwriting on our projects. Um, I mean, let's be honest, most of us are all purchasing at the moment papers and music papers and books and old script, collage papers and stamps. Well, where does that all come from? That comes from our handwriting. That comes from our telling our story to someone else, doesn't it? Did I stick that? Yes. So making sure that you're, you know, that you're writing these things down. And if you don't like your handwriting, at least pop it on the back. Pop it on the back, okay? Who's in the photo? When the photo was taken? Um, where the photo was taken? You really want to be able to look back and, and know that story, okay? Down or up? There, there, there. Okay, happy days. Check it out. So, for those of you who uh, have stuck with me, thank you very much. What we have just created is a double scrapbooking layout that is available for a kit, as a kit for $22 currently online. There is limited stocks available of this guy. Um, but jump online to nataliemay.com.au. Um, this is a kit, 22 bucks. You have just watched the instructions. When you purchase the kit, you will get all of the 
um, papers, you will get the chipboard, you will need to add your own stenciling and your own ink, and you can, uh, you will be able to watch this video back on YouTube and make this project, okay? It is easy. You just need to listen out for all of that waffling <laughs> that I have done. Um, listen out for the instructions. All right. So it is here for you. So today being Thursday, the 14th of July, we have got nataliemay.com.au. We have a daily special, which is... 15% off Tim Holtz products, distress inks, stamps, stencils, tools, um, all of the distress products, uh, anything Tim Holtz is 15% off today. We also have Vicky Booten products, 15% off. So that is her papers, her glaze, her foundation papers, her ephemera, all of those bits are all 15% off. And we also have all of our pattern papers. So if you want to purchase the entire collection, of this gorgeous blueprint paper from Paper Rose, um, you can do that and get 15% off. This won't be on special tomorrow, on Friday. On Friday, we will be having a new special and I will be back tomorrow doing more live Facebook creating with you. So thank you very much, guys. I hope you have all had a wonderful day and that you are living your best crafty life. Thank you very much. Wash your hands, kiss your kids. See you in the morning at 9 a.m. SA time right back here for a morning coffee and a chat. See ya.